You are live. Sorry, guys. We had a little dilemma there. Yeah, we had a glitch. Internet uh, problem. Yeah. So Not enough it. connectivity, but we'd have it now. Obviously, we're good to go. So now we're good to go. We got to say hi to everybody. Hi. Hi. Hey, who else here? Debbie's here. Yes, you're in the right place. Debbie Edie's here. Yeah, you guys are all right. You know, you guys are all right. We're... We said 3.30, but we yeah, had a, uh, a internet problem. We had it, yeah, and we didn't want to cancel until we could see if we could get it. So um, everything's good now, and we're here with you. I don't know why the alert's saying 3, because everything I wrote was 3.30. It's 3.30, guys. Yeah. I don't know what I did. Yeah, somebody said last week, this is, oh, yeah, it was saying change the date and everything. I said, well, I didn't see that, so I don't know what's up with that. What? Everything that I wrote said the right date and the right time, you know. No, when I was trying to put put it live, but it, it would just give them an alert anyways. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, we're all here now, or we're starting to get... I never know where to go. For the most part, Debbie, you come, come here. Just go to the channel. You'll just find come us. Because I try to put everything on here as much as I can. The class was on here. Most all the videos are on here. Um, we almost never do them on Facebook anymore, Lauren had a problem the other time, the other week, that she managed. There's always technical so, issues. You guys have to understand uh, this, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Hi from Missouri. Loud. You don't have to do this. Janine right? Brown. Hi, okay. hello. Hey, hi, Janine Brown. Do you and want me to switch? Andrea. Do you want me to switch it over to switch, the... What, what? To this? Oh, no, I want to talk to him for a minute. Okay. Yeah, I can't, yeah I'm looking in the wrong place, huh? Okay, guys, so we... We think we have a problem to solve, and we're good to go. Thank you for coming. Um, this oh, here she is with the chicken. Um, <laughs> this week we're gonna do the necklace, the necklace that everybody's yeah. wanted me to make and show them how to do it for like the longest time. And you know, once in a while we just get yes, something me. like you know that's mine. I don't want to share it. <laughs> Hi Debbie. Hi it's Darla. Because like, we do share a lot. But Hi, then I got to thinking, you know what? You guys can do this. It's Hi, like, Nancy. Even if I didn't From teach you anything, you you could do it. It's so easy. Really, what it is is mini assemblage. And um, you do have to punch or drill some holes, and the piece will show you. I don't know if you saw it yet. Having made a short video uh, this morning of how to punch the holes manually without using a drill. Um, and so if you want to see that, I put on a group. And I put it, she has it on the Beast Boutique's Facebook page. And it's at here, right here, in the short section of our video lineup here at uh, YouTube. YouTube. It's on Instagram and Killin. Um, I don't know where I should put it, Pinterest, Pinterest. and TikTok. Yep. Yeah. It's Pretty everywhere. much everywhere. It's everywhere. This is what I don't quite get. Like, every there's a lot of people watching it, but, like, Let's have some more customers or let's have some more people in the group, at least, you know, something. But I guess people just like to watch. <laughs> and that's okay, too. We're glad you're watching us. So if you're just watching us, fine. And if you're new to us today, thanks for being here. We're so glad you're here. And don't forget to and, subscribe. Yeah, don't forget to subscribe. We see a lot of you guys watching but not subscribing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, maybe they don't want to. Well, no, they should if you want well, this awesome new contact. Well, yeah, if you stuff. want awesome new contact, you should. But, you know, we don't want to be pushy either. No, not be pushy. You know, <laughs> but, um, yeah, the one thing, Chicken a stuff. lot of you guys did this last week, and I was so thrilled. If, you know, you're making your comments here because we're live, you know, and you can. But if you can come back after the video's over and put a comment under the video in the re regular section, like if you have a question that didn't get answered, or if you just want to say something, you want to say hi, whatever. Um, if you could come and do that there, because it helps to boost us. So more people can find us at YouTube. We don't get paid for that. Believe me, people that monetize their videos at YouTube, they are not making very much money at all. It don't work that way anymore. But we found that it's a way that we can get the videos boosted so more people will see them. And we need that because we go to a lot of effort to make them, right? For you. We like more people to see them too. So anyway, I'm just finishing this up. And what I'm doing is I'm making the fantabulous horse thing, horse necklace. <laughs> and because I'm late, I actually finished it because I was running behind. We've just had a crazy last few days over here. But then how many times do I tell you? All the time. It's always like 
It seems like it's always the summer months. It's always like that. <laughs> it's always like that. So what's different, right? It's all situations mm. normal. Okay. So anyway, if you want to flip things over here, Javi, to yeah. um, where I'm working. Uh, we just want to say hello to Michelle, Mary, Rhonda. Vondell. That's Vondell, sorry. Yeah. This is Mary O'Toole. Marines here. I made it. I didn't think I would. Well, we're, we're late anyway. And Judge SK. And who else is up top oh. there? Wayne. Dab Morrow's here. Dara's here. Nancy is here. Um, and there's one more, I think, under Nancy. Luann. Hey, Luann. How you doing? Haven't seen you for a while. We really love you. We're so glad to see you here today. So anyway, so here is that necklace or a variation. Yeah, let me transfer over. She's going to transfer over now. I don't see my ugly mug anymore. <sighs> delay, delay, delay. What's going on here? Give me a second, guys. Something always happens. Always happens. Ah. <sighs> I don't know what happened. Okay, just keep talking. <laughs> just keep talking. Okay, I guess we'll show you. Here, here's one. You I don't know what happened. happened here. Yeah, she's got some kind of a bag on there or something. I don't know what the heck that is. I don't know either. She's got a picture of a bag. I hope you're it's not, okay. You're not. They're not looking they're not at that. that. Okay. They're seeing those. They're seeing this now. Okay. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. I don't know. We had a, a problem with the computer yesterday that Javi had to fix, and she had to take a bunch of devices and things apart. And I probably is what got weird. So anyhow, so here's the necklace, the that horse brooch. Every time I show the picture of the old ones I made long ago, everybody goes, "Oh, when are you gonna do a tutorial on that? When are you gonna make that? You know, when can we learn that? You know, well, today's your day. Today's, today's the day." The day. Right, and I hate to be doing it on this brown mat because it, it, yeah. this isn't so clear. But maybe I'll just, you know what, maybe I'll just lift this up for a minute. And this is all scratched up and stuff, but at least it's white. And then you can maybe see it better before. I need to work on this mat because, the Teflon mat, because I'm using glue. But I could show it to you without that for a second. So I'm going to do that. So I'm just trying to get everything straightened out. You know how it is when you put danglies all over something, you've got to... Straighten it all out. You know how when you make your pictures, how it just makes you nuts. But when you stand up and wear it, Hi, it's Gloria. just right. It's all Jan. Where are you and Jan here? Okay. And um, this person, I can't, I don't want to say it wrong. Marjorie Roberts. Hi. Hi. How you doing, Marjorie? Marjorie? So glad you're Hi, here. Hi, everybody. So here's the horse brush. Well, it's not a brooch. It's a Initially, necklace. when I made this, I don't have my little catalog in here, but I should have got it. Anyway, when I first started making this, <clears throat> I made it um, for my gift line of jewelry back in the 90s. And, of course, it was a lot simpler than this. Um, stores didn't want to pay very much for it, so you had to dumb it down a little bit. I hate to use that as a word, but that's what it was. So, anyway, but I started making them then, and through time, they just kind of evolved. And I haven't made one for a while. Uh, this, is, this looks pretty good. There's a few things I would do a little different, but it's actually, it's finished. I got the the neckline on it i took pieces of scrap chain remember how we've talked about scrap chain and how much you can get out of a piece of scrap chain how cool it is because you can do you know don't ever throw a little piece of chain out because you don't know it might come in handy you know so this is this neckline is completely scrap chain maybe i can stretch this out and show you just little bits of this neck this chain was chain that i patinaed years ago this flat length chain and it came out so good, and I've just been using it a little bit at a little bit, you know, just for accent, pop of color, whatever you want to call it. So it's all brush chain, it's all the old Korean stuff. Um, so there's like four different kinds in there. Then I just had a little bit left, you know, and saved it. Um, and then I have my horse, and it's got basically it's a, it's a piece of charm enhancer jewelry, you know? It's a type of charm jewelry. That's what made me think, too, since we're doing the charm jewelry challenge over at the creative group what better time to show you guys how to make this than now so i think you guys can get a pretty thanks jan for that thanks well, we're glad you're here luann we're really glad so she said i bought a bag of scrap chain for you and i have lots of projects from it right by and it they are i fact, we're out now everybody realized it was a smart buy and buy but i can get more so not to, 
not to worry. As soon as a little more, like they say, a little more mud flows in a hole, um, I will get some more. Okay. But there's a lot of cool pieces on the little check beads hanging and, and there's a paper bead here and a little charm stuff. And that's what I love about doing stuff like this. I will probably change this and shorten this up. But um, what I love about doing stuff like this is that you can just use little bitsy things that are maybe just laying around on your table and say, hey, wait a minute, what could I do with that? And you have all kinds of like happy discoveries with it. And that's the kind of piece this is. So how about... Let's just go ahead and make one, okay? This one's not set up real good yet, but Javi will take it and make a thumbnail for, mm, for this the video, video yeah. when we get done. But this is basically how it's going to look. I have a few little things I want to change about it. But it's really, you know, basically a mini assemblage with some simple beaded dangles and scrap chain. So, and it could also be a story piece because... The horse might have a story. Maybe it was your favorite horse. Maybe it was your horse growing up, you know, whatever. But so on this horse, I put, uh, where's my little pointer doohickey? There it is. I put a horse head, which is this piece. We have lots of them at this site. There's like 39 of them or something. Yep. And then I use this piece for the back. I've classically always used this piece. You know, ever since I started making them, this is the piece that I used. Um, we don't have a lot of these right now, so what else could you use? Well, you could use a, a larger piece around filigree. That would work fine. Um, you, could, you could use the one like this that has the center out. And where I put them, I don't see where I put them over here. I probably stuck them somewhere because I didn't need them right now. Um, there's one, it's just like this, only the center's out. We do have those, and you can use those to work with. Boy, I wish I knew where I put that. I've had just such a terrible time locating things that was on here, and now it's like poof, gone, where I don't know. Um, not there. Anyway, it'll probably turn up. Anyway, so there's one that has the back out. You can still work with that, and I'll, I'll show you how. Is that it? Yep. Okay, she's gone. I threw them over here for some reason. Okay, so what I mean is this. It's got the middle out. Okay, can you even see that? Because it's both brown. Maybe I hold <laughs> yeah. it up. I'll hold it up to you. Let me see. It's got the middle cut out. Okay, this one has the center in it. Okay, it works either way. There's there's some of these here. Looks like we're out of these. Um, I'll get some in my next order, but I don't have one in right now because. You know, if you've been hanging around with me for a while, the toolers all go out on break in the middle of summer. You can't get anything since till mid late August, so I have to wait right Hi, Jessica. now. Hi, um. Jessica. Jessica. Oh, and Gloria too. Did, don't you have a resin horse brooch? Well, we have we have uh, resin cameos. Yeah. Um, there's one on my Etsy right now. It's one of my favorites, but I decided to sell it. It's pretty spectacular. Um, and it's a resin horse brooch. So if you wanted to, you might be able to do a resin brooch in here, a resin um, horse in here. Yeah, you yeah. But it may not be big enough. It may overpower your your piece. Yeah. Your piece, because what I want to do with it is a mini assemblage. But I mean, you're free to try it. I'm just trying to see if I get this on straight. Yeah, I did. So this one has classically always had this piece, this piece here, and this piece. I've always done that. Okay, now, of course, this doesn't come with holes. So that's why Javi made the video to show you how to make a hole. And I do it right here at the shoulders. You see that? I'm going to come up. See it? The shoulders right here and right here. Okay, so that's pretty even. Normally, I like to run a, a tube rivet through it just to finish off the hole, but this piece is so busy. You probably never see it anyway, so it's fine the way it is. But anyway, these are the two pieces I use. And then after that, years ago, I used to use this heavy beading hoop that it was always a pain because it 
made it stick up funny and I had to work with it and compensate it. So now um, we've rediscovered these wonderful beading hoops. I had some in brass logs. There's, there are some on the site. So I thought, well, we'll just use those. They're fine. So I put that on there. If you don't like that, if you think that wire is too skinny, then get yourself some 20 gauge, you know, wire and make your own and put it there because you're going to glue it down anyway. So you just have to twist it till it, you know, fits the shape you want. And there oh, you're you never be. late with beansy. <laughs> beansy. No. <laughs> uh, you know, I just got a thought. Maybe I would try doing that to just show you guys yeah. how that might be. Um, I like using the bean hoop. It's pretty good. But maybe we'll like to, let's just try some wire. Why not? We got time. Okay. I'm just so tickled I got this one completely finished because I was starting to think and I would never get it there. I wanted to make it all last night, but I had a whole bunch of paperwork and stuff that I had to take care of and didn't get to and I got too tired. And I said, you know what, I can't make jewelry now. So I'm good. But here I am now. Okay, so this is 40 millimeter to me, this one. It's 40 millimeter. And to my eye, that's too big. It's out of balance for this. So I'm just going to take my piece of wire I cut. I'll tell you how long it is. Once again, I've misplaced the. Here it is. I'm trying to never misplace this. It is. Push this up. About four inches. Okay. It's about four inches of 20 gauge wire. This is the vintage bronze wire, which you either like it or you hate it. I don't know. I might personally be somewhere in between. Um, I don't like the gloss about it because, you know, the brass ox is kind of matte. So you could possibly take some fine steel wool and go over it. Um, but you have to be careful you don't remove all the color too because this is plated copper. That's why it's so soft. You know, copper is very soft. So we're just going to kind of turn this into a hoop. Now it will be a different shape if I do that and it'll probably be a little smaller but you know what I'm okay with that. Um, somebody asked could we see the back? The back of what? This? Uh, the finished piece I'm guessing. Um, well I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't fall apart because it hasn't set up yet. It's like any other mini assemblage yeah. piece. This is hanging down but it's anchored clearly at the top and it's just this drilled through and there's not a lot of uh, glue mess because I usually don't make a lot of glue mess. I may take this off and shove it back up in there a little bit because I am it doesn't look sturdy back there but it really is it's fine the way it is I don't mind it if you do just don't do that but I yeah. I usually classically will always let something hang off a little bit I, I kind of like to make it look a little bit random anyway yeah. so basically there's not much difference than than this you know it's it's same except it has this on it this here the wire so we could go with this wire hoop but if I did this is what I would do and this is what I did here I went in and I cut it down a little bit I cut it down maybe an inch inch and a quarter and then put it back up into the little thing what holds it now if you wanted to you could glue that with a drop of glue wouldn't hurt anything not a bad idea but it's pretty tight and when i put this on here i would be gluing it over it anyway so i'll be gluing that down and then i'll be gluing this over top and all the while being very careful that i don't get this horse pushed up too far and then it covers my holes now yes. if you want to just make a pin out of it i always made these as pins but, you know, people are not wearing pins so much anymore. I would wear this as a pin in a heartbeat. I like it that way. But um, if you want to drill the holes out and put the horse head on, be sure that you don't cover your holes or you've made your holes. And once again, to learn how to make the holes, if you're not real, you know, good with that, we have a full-length video on how to use a hole punch. And Javi did the short. It's only a four second short, but boy, it shows you a lot in just a little bit of time and you'll get the point what you need to do, okay? So, and you can ask me questions too. You can ask me 
For example, if you can't think of any to ask like now, then come back later and say, oh, I meant to ask her that. Put it underneath the video in the comments section. We watch that. We watch that to see who's yeah, commenting. We'll what you're saying. We'll always <laughs> answer you. So anyway, thank you, Margie. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Nancy. Yes. I would like to pick it up a little bit better, but um, the wire needs to set up in here. It's not done it yet quite. That's true. I got like. So anyway, so I have the choice of putting this piece on here, which it would be good, or I have the choice of putting something like this on here. I'd have to loop this over, of course, which I'll do. I might have needed to make this a little bigger, actually. This over just a little bit. Oops, that hurt. Just a little bit. Yeah, this doesn't have to look good up here because it doesn't really matter. Then I'm going to clip the end of it off. Holding my hands so it doesn't fly over my poor hobby. So now I've got a teardrop shape. Oops. I should have made that longer. Anyway, let's just lay it down to see what it would look like once I get it figured out. Okay, so if I did this. This is how it looks. But, you know, I have to straighten it up a little bit. But honestly, this has a that gloss to it, that wire that I need to get. And this is so matte. This is what, for me, this is what I want to go with, this one, the beading hoop. We have beading hoops on the site. They're very inexpensive. So I think I'm going to go with this and not use any wire. But I didn't do a very good job of... of putting this together but you can see what to do. I don't do, know, I like you know. that that shape that you made with that. You like the teardrop shape? Yeah, because it kind of reminds me of like um what they have on the horses, you know. They're Well, they're we could try it one more time. I have a problem with that, but I think we need a little bit more wire I had. So, I'm going to take off a whole bunch cuz what, what is that this thing wire put shape in between the horse? Teeth. The bridle. The bridle. Part, I think it's yeah. a bridle in it. Yeah, I, I think, think so too. They say if you ever read Black Beauty, anybody ever read Black Beauty? They went on and be... on and on. It's the bit. It's the bit. That's what they call it, not the bridle. It's the bit. Oh. And they went on and on and on in that book about how cruel bits were and how it hurt the horse's mouth. Oh wow, and, I didn't know that. Yeah, because it's how they guide the the horse. So they would put the bit in his mouth, and then the reins would be touched to the bit, and so when the driver wanted to manage the horse and make it go this way or that, he would pull on that and it would, it would pull the poor horse's mouth mm. and make it be all bloody sometimes after a long trip, a long journey. Yeah, I don't know if they do the, that anymore. I bet you they don't. No, they put that other thing on top That's of That's another thing? Yeah, it's, um, it goes over their head. Well, I'm glad. I've seen that. I don't know what it's called. I, though, so. I loved Black Beauty, that book, when I was a kid, and I read it a number of times, and I always remembered how uh, they stressed, oh, the poor horse, the poor horse. His mouth was all tore up and hurting. He couldn't eat his food because its mouth was so sore. So anyway, I'm just going to nip this off. I've got it twisted over on itself real good. Yeah, I don't know a whole lot about horses. I, I've never even ridden a horse very much in my life, but they are noble animals. And I will tell you, if you do horse jewelry, you will sell it. People, I've sold so much horse jewelry in the past. Okay, so now I have kind of a teardrop shape. You guys see that? Yeah. You've seen my wire videos before. You know about that teardrop shape. But I could pull this out. I just have to be careful that I don't loosen this part up here where I've you know, looped it on for itself, and I can make it more round easily. So we could do that. So I'm going to ask you guys. I'm going to get your opinion. Do you prefer this wire for the charm enhancer, or do you prefer this brass ox one that is a complete match for it? It'll stay once I glue it. What do you think? Yeah, give us your, your yeah, ideas. Yeah, and before I go on, is Sandra, I purchased you for years ago. Okay. Um, anyway. Oh, Sandra, Sandra Colner. Yeah, I remember now. Yeah. I actually had a bunch of them, but you did get one. One of the ones in the picture, I did believe you did find that. 
Um, so anyway, which one? I think bits are still in use. I was a stable just a week or so, and one of the grooms showed them to me, and they were all custom fit. Well, then maybe they don't hurt the horse. I love horses. When I was a child, I wanted to ride one to school. Yeah, Black Beauty. So anybody have any ideas? What would they use on this hoop? Because I need to move on. Anybody want to say or don't, don't know? I'm just going to choose. Personally, I like the first one. That would be this one or this one. You like the wire one I made or the beading hoop one? She said the first one. So which one was that? Because I remember it was probably I the, the one wire. I made. Yeah, one I made. Let's see what anybody else says. Okay, here we go. Um, I like to have your wire. That's glorious. The brass ox piece. Which one? <laughs> Hi, Chris. How you doing? You're never late. Either, wire or either is okay. The... I like the brass ox piece. So there's Mary says I like the brass ox. I like to have your wire. You know what? Because I used the beading hoop in this one, maybe I will go ahead and use the wire on this one. And we'll just see the difference when they're done. Oh, this is somebody else. Jessica says heavier wire. Okay, let's go with the heavier wire. Yeah, the other one's coming through, it. but it's strong. Let's do it. Thin but strong. Okay, so now what you got to do is you got to glue this on here. And then you got to glue the horse head down. And then you just start doing your mini assemblage and off you go. And I use things um, in mine from the mini assemblage kit from the class that we had last January. I don't have any more of those kits to sell, but if somebody wanted a mini assemblage kit, I could make them one up with the parts that we're using now. That's up to them. Um, wouldn't be custom, it would just be kind of random, whatever I thought, you know, would be best in there, but it would be good, you know, my stuff is always good. So, anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and put this down. Oh, before I go on, I think I mentioned it, but I'm not sure. If you don't like this heart to put it on, I don't even know why it's on this heart. It, it's just what I always did, okay, and it works. Um, if you don't like this, pick anything. Find something with filigree, I would say would be good whatever seems good to you like I had pulled this out this is a heart blank 38 millimeter heart blank from the site could they use like a luggage tag if they want to do or is that too big it might work like the uh, silver I one I don't have this stuff in silver right now but I do have silver oh I have brass ox ones too yeah I do I have lots of them yeah so um, you could try it you know you try something else if you have something you want to try it it never hurts to try you know the glue is pretty forgiving especially if you don't let it set up too long if you put it on it's like you leave it sit for a little bit and you start working these nah 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 not this you can peel it right up clean it up it'll be fine so anyway but this is the piece i always used and it wouldn't matter if it's on this one or this one okay. you know you might see this little nib of wire showing you know or you could just put it down a little bit more and then put the horse on. I prefer it on this though. Okay, let's get going. Because we we're already late getting to you. And I'll just show you basic things. Because to be honest, most of you guys, if you follow me for a while, you know how this goes anyway. So I'm covering the knot on the wire and I'm just putting it right here in the middle. Okay. And I might just take and put a little bit more on the side. You know, kind of put a glob over it because the horse is going to be there anyways. And you'll get it good and secure. It wouldn't even hurt to get it out over the shoulders a little bit. But let's see how much. You know what? It won't show because you're going to be putting bits and collage bits over it. So it won't show. I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit more. And I'm just going over the top of it because that'll work. It doesn't always, but in this case it will. <laughs> you don't have to make this part look great. Love luggage tag. Me too. Could you pierce the heart on the sides toward the bottom and link the wire ends into those? On the sides toward the bottom? Like down here? Yeah, oh, I know what you mean. Yes, yeah, you could. So yeah, I've done that. Do that. You absolutely could Instead do that. Instead of putting the beading on. Uh, yes, I've absolutely done that. You absolutely could do that. Yes. Absolutely. 
I've got a picture of something I did like that. It's not the horse brooch, but I've, I've got a picture of something I did like that one time. I'll look and see if I can find it, and I'll put it on a group, maybe on the YouTube community page, too, yeah. so other people can see. If you're not in the Beast of Boutique's creative group yet, you might like to join us. It's free. Yeah, there's a link in the description it's free. on this video. We have a lot of fun. Yeah, there is a lot of fun. Awesome activities and stuff. Yes. But not him. No, not him. He's not allowed. He's banned. <laughs> He's only allowed on YouTube. He's annoying. <laughs> I didn't squeak him yet. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm not having a very uh, good nerves you want, day. You want me to squeak him to make you happy? <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> not me. I'm just saying that to you. Probably not. <laughs> Some okay, non. Like, he hasn't squeaked some for a don't while. Like him squeaking. <laughs> he has been not squeaking some for don't like that. as long as I think for a while. Actually, more than six months, I think. Well, we thought he was cute. No, I that. think he was just waking up all the yeah. um, the animals. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna start doing more Instagram reels, and maybe we use them in some of those because maybe younger people would like it. Um, no, they just need to be awakened during the video when they're watching. They need to be awake when they're watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be good, wouldn't it? <laughs> be awakened. Yeah. Somebody said, ooh, love the love it. I know, maybe child. there needs to be a part two on this, guys, and we could try it with another piece. I know we won't have time to do it today, but that's a thought. Look at you, look at you. you like it. What am I doing? A lot of people love this piece. Going my, I remember when I made them for my line, there was a woman who had a really elegant shop, and it was by the Saratoga Racetrack. It's mm -hmm. so famous, and she would have every, she would have like ten or fifteen of these made at a time, and every one of them at the bottom would have a little heart, and I had to engrave Saratoga on it. Oh my god! That was a stretch, <laughs> but I did it. That is a stretch. If you want to know about engraving on brass, there are videos in our channel. About it. Yes, there is definitely a bunch of. Videos. I will not do it for you today, though. I'm just not up to it. <laughs> Plus, I, I'll be honest with you. I used to do it every day. When really? We had our lot. Oh, yes. I have been See, I don't know. thousands and thousands and thousands of pieces. I'm not, I'm not bragging. It's just the truth. I have. You know, I do them freehand with a Dremel, a little cheapy Dremel engraver. Like you mark your tools with your number, a number or your name and address or something. So if somebody steals them, they can catch them, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Um, so, I mean, but I got to the place where I could engrave freehand in script on the pieces, just so long as it would, you know, fit. And I got Saratoga to fit. And so I did her. She was just so thrilled. She bought so many of those. She'd sell them right out and come back and say, Can you make 15 more? You know, yeah. That's so it would be nice if somebody was saying, Make me 15 now. But on the other hand, you know what? I don't know if I can handle it. I don't, I don't do very much with commission work anymore. I haven't for a long time because um, there's. I don't know. There's just so much other stuff that I have to do. I have to do a lot of writing here, and I have to have videos and classes and stuff like that, and I just have a hard time making time to do it. I loved, I used to love to do it. I did a lot of weddings back in the day. I did I did uh, bridal flowers, too, in silk. Hobby knows, because I did hers, but hers were in silk. Hers were real. Um, yeah, I want the real. <laughs> yeah, she wanted the real. Anyway. So he looks pretty good. I think he's pretty even. That's, that's the thing you want to check out. Make sure, you know, you got this pretty even and make sure that your holes aren't obscured if you want to be a necklace. If you're making this into a big, long, dangly brooch, it doesn't matter because you're going to just put a pin back. And, of course, you know, we have those pin backs that have the bail that's built into them, too. You could use one of those, but then it would be more like a pendant in the middle. You wouldn't have, like, the two lines of of uh, chain going up the sides, okay? So anyway, so that's just an option. All right, now, I'm gonna do the collage part of it, and then we'll talk about doing some danglies. The problem is, is until this sets up a little bit, I really can't attach them, because I have to go lift this thing up, and then it gets all out of kilter. But you'll get the point, because you can see the one I have made, all right? But we'll talk about what we might put on it. Um, but let's go ahead and do the medicine. I'm just looking again to make sure that I don't have anything covered. No, I don't. 
This is so busy. Oh, another thing too that you can do if you like is you could take and accent it with a tiny little bit of Gilder's paste. I'm not sure I would put it anywhere where you're going to put glue. If yeah. you do, you might want to rough it up first. It might make the glue not hold. I'm really tempted to get some out and put it on here. You know what? I think I'm going to. But, and I'll have to be careful I don't glue anything over it. Let's see. I want the patina gilder space. I have Shouldn't one. you do it after when you're done with the piece, maybe? Um, or during? No, or because what? there's so much on here. I just have to right. look and make sure that I don't... Got it. You know. Come on, open. Open. There we go. And I just use my fingers on this, guys, like I've showed you before. If you don't like that, then get a brush or whatever. I just use my fingers. Oh, you haven't shown this bunch because we... This is just... See? You know, we used to do a lot of Gilder's paste, and then I got away from it, and then they reformulated it, and I liked the formula, so I thought, okay, let's do this. You see how pretty that is on brass socks? You know what? I'll put it on this one, and you can see more. But I'm going to accent this one a little, little bit. Just over the side. Look at how pretty that is. Can you see that? It really lifted it up, you know. A heart looks like the roses they put. Yeah. Yeah, kind of does, Chris. You know, I never thought about it, huh? Thanks for bringing that up. I'm going to put it on this so you can see. Patina Gilder's Paste is the balm on brass ox. Just a little get on your finger like this and just very lightly. Because this is relief. It'll just pick it up on the highlight. You won't have to scrub around on it or anything. Just a little bit. See how easily? Boy, does that change it up, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. That changes it up. And also, if you had something in matte black, distress it a little tiny bit, and then do patina Gilder's paste. Oh, baby. That is gorgeous. The only time I don't use much of it is on the silverware, but you can. I know people that do. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just, I don't know, to me, and this is my opinion, you know, and you don't have to follow my opinion by any means ever. But, um, patina, yeah. it's patina, a patina, I'll show patina you. color. I'll show sorry. You. We have some too. We have, I think, most of the Gilder's paste is in stock right now. It looks yep. like this, and it comes in a nice package now. There's directions in it, there's little uh, wooden paddles to help you get it out of the can if you want to use more. Um, I love it. And, and also, too, I had have, have to struggle a little bit opening that at the first, but normally I don't struggle with it at all. The can they used to have was like an old shoe polish can where you had to, like, press down on the side and then flip it up and hope it open. It's just once you get it going, you're good. You know, this is screw lid. It's much better. You do have to be sure you keep it, um, you know, screwed down good because... Um, you don't want it drying out. But even if it does dry out, you can bring it back with mineral spirits. Not mineral oil. Miss Kate tried that and found out real quick that doesn't work. So, but isn't that beautiful with that on there? I think it looks great. Yeah, it can, makes it come alive. It really does. You know what? Yeah, because Maureen, you saw how little I used to get that effect. This can, I will have this for a long time. I mean, a lot of people see it and they say, oh, it's $12.95. Oh, that's so... No, it's not a lot because it goes so far. That's true. You know, it's a really, really good product. I always recommend if people are going to buy Gilder's Paste, buy, like, the antique gold and the silver and get the yeah. patina. Those three. Start there, and then you can branch out. Because they have colors to them. Slate and... Inca gold, which is just a richer type uh, thing. A coral red, damson plum purple. I mean, these are just the ones I have back here. I mean, there's gobs. Of, the Pinotage is one of my favorites. There's a bronze. Yeah, I mean, you just go on the site and see. I think I have like 13 colors. And, of course, you know, um, if you have the B2B business to business coupon, you get 20% off at 100 you know, so that helps too. 
If you don't have that, I'll tell you how you get that. You get that? I'm going to have to move that. Um, if you have a business that's registered, like you have a tax ID, or if you live in a state where they don't make you get that, you know, then just um, something with your business, something like a check or something, a piece of stationery or a bill from one of your suppliers or whatever. If you don't have a vendor's number, no business number. But if you do, that's what we prefer to have. You call Jordy and you'll tell him, hey, I have the credentials to get the B2B discount. And he'll take them down, put them in the notebook, and then we'll give you the code. And then every time you come, you have to spend $100 to get it, but every time you come, you don't have to wait till I have a sale. You get that every time if you can do $100. So, just so you know. Okay, so we did that. We're done. Let's get going here, girls. But isn't that pretty? That is. I don't know. I don't like, even if I couldn't buy any of them except patina, I would buy patina. You know, because it's just so great. Anyway, let's go ahead and, and chotch him up a little bit. So let's see what I got here. I've got these nice roses here. I've got these bronze roses. Uh, Nancy said the E6000 still sticks to that. Um, Good question. I didn't put this where I'm going to put too much E6000. It'll probably be a button over and it'll be all right. If you're concerned about it, you could take a piece of steel wool and rough it up. Um, it's probably going to be okay, though. Another question, which uh, gold is the closest to the RGP color? Hmm. From the patinas? Yeah, I That's mean, a good question. Who's asking that? The, the Debbie. It called? The wax? Um, the paste? I think probably your antique gold is a very, very good all-purpose. See here? Yeah. And here's the thing, once you apply it, if you like to get that cinnamon honey look into it, you could take a little bit of brown panettage maybe. Um, even after you let it cure, you could do a little bit of acrylic paint, paint over it. And then you could probably get, you, it, that'd be custom. You'd have to mess around with that, but I would start with antique gold. I'll have to do that, Debbie. I'll have to mess around with that and find out. That'd be yeah. a good thing to know. But I would say probably gonna like that one the best. Okay, so I'm gonna look for a few more little doodads here out of my kit that I have left from the class. It's so tight, but that's probably a good thing because then I don't lose it out of there, huh? Okay, I need a couple more of these little curvy leaves. Really, any smallish leaves will work for you. I don't have to worry about it too much. I only use two in it, so, and let's see, do I still have some? I thought I had some, yeah, I'm going to be some too, that's probably enough, okay. All right, you know, and what I'm putting on it, you know, it's just a suggestion type thing, but you do what you want, you know, you may have parts of it that you like and say, no, I want to put that on, you don't have to make it look just like I did, do. Yeah, Nancy, if you're worried about it, all you got to do is take a little steel wool over it and remove a little bit. You'll be all right. But I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem the way I'm going to do this, okay? Now, on this one, I've got it all over it. So that's different. But I think we're good because I really didn't put it anywhere where I have to worry about it too much. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this stuff on here. Let's see how I did it with this one. I looked at my horse over here to see where I'd put it. I try to put it in places where it's not going to matter a whole lot. So I'm going to put the first one. And this is the way I always made my stuff back when I had my line. Because they didn't always have the leaves going both ways. So you had to compensate. So I'm going to put one up there. Don't worry about that little blob hanging out there. I'm just going to take and move it. But there's going to be so much stuff here. It's not going to matter. Anyhow, not really. Okay. But yeah, yeah, you do want to be careful because you don't, you don't want to have, a, you know, too much cleanup. I'm going to go ahead and move this up here on the knob of that a little bit because if it's flat, I don't think I have quite enough surface. you got to have enough surface for it to grab. Okay, so now I used a few buttons, buttons. So I'm going to take and I'm going to use this one here. And like you see, I like to let it hang off a little bit. 
but this button's a lot bigger. I'm probably going to, after we're done today, swap this one out and do one like this. I think I will. I think I will. I think I will. Okay, here's some more buttons I have. Now, for this, I I like to um, find some, you know, buttons that don't have dirt on them. If they do, clean them off. Sometimes for certain things, though, I will leave the dirt. And just, you know, to seal it, just lacquer it over over it because sometimes I like that look. But in this case, I don't think I want it. If you want it, though, that's fine. You do what you like, okay? You do what appeals to you because you're the boss. It's your design. Do you design. have to seal the gilded piece? You should, probably. You should. Um, you don't really have to if you let it cure real good. Um, it never can hurt to do, like, a little spray of something over it. Or in this case, you know, I wouldn't be able to do that. So what I would do is I would take my swelling and clear coat. Let's see if I have some here to show you. Yeah, it's this product, swelling and clear coat. Take a brush and just brush over it if you're afraid it's going to ding off. But it's very um, distressed look anyway. It's not going to come off and close if that's what you're worried about. There's not enough on there to come off and close. Just let it cure real good before you wear it. I would say anything with paint on it, at least 24 hours and 48 is better, okay, before you wear it. Okay, especially anything that has glue, 72 is, is optimum. If it has this glue, because you may be breathing glue fumes, which is not too much fun, in my opinion. So let it gas off, and especially if you're going to sell it, you know, like say you're going to have a show on the weekend and you want to hurry up and get some stuff done. Well, if you're using E6000 on that glue, on that jewelry, you better do it like on Monday and let it gas off really good because your jewelry is going to smell like glue and people are going to tell you about it. So, um, yeah, do something else instead of glue stuff. Okay, I'm going to put him like this on his side. I like that. And let's see, do I want to put anything else on? Yeah, I did. I haven't added another one up here. Now, this is on the horse right on the edge here, so I don't even worry about the gilder's paste being there at all. Okay, so I got that done. And then on this guy, I like this little round pearly thing, so I think I'm going to maybe... I might cover the button with this. You know, it's basically, you know, how you feel it, however you feel it, you know, is what you do with many assemblies, right? I had some of those white roses over there someplace. Oh, well, I'll find another one. Okay, so now, I liked um, this little bird to put on it, and I also had some silver crown charms here. Not quite sure why they're not in the drawer. I think somebody found them someplace. Anyway, so this one. Now, since I'm going to use it as part of this design, I want to put it up here like this. I kind of like that look. I like that. So I need to cut the top of it off, the little hanging hole. Okay. And then... For the bird. I'm trying to remember to stay in frame so you guys can see. Perfect pearls, no. What? Eulers, I would say, yeah, perfect. Who says, what What was the question? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, oh right for sealing. Eulers, I would say, yeah, per Well, if you do perfect pearls over epoxy sculpt, you, and you let it dry into it, or even polymer clay, and you bake it into it, no, you don't have to seal it. But if you put it over top of something else, and you're not, it's not clay, say it's like brass, then you have to use embossing ink first to get it to stick. Then you brush it over it, and when it's dry, yes, you do have to seal it. We have lots of videos on it. If you need to review it, if you can't find the video, let me know, I'll help you. But really all you have to do is go to the video section and then there's a little search box up there and put perfect pearls into it or gilder's paste or whatever. Everything I have done on those things will come up. 
you'd be surprised what comes up. Okay, so now I want to do a flower right here, but I don't know, this might be too big. This might be too big. Maybe I gotta move this up a little bit. I don't want to like cover his face like that, although the other one kind of did a little bit. Maybe I just move it out a little bit. This tube of glue is getting gone. Okay, so that's on there, pretty good. And then um, I want to do this, this little golden um, flower. Have you guys discovered these yet? They're in the metal stuff, and I think it's in mosaic beads and bling. If you have not discovered these yet, you want some. You want some. I use them all the time ever since I discovered them. Now, I think they were supposed to be bead caps, but... Um, I do other things. This is what they look like by themselves. By themselves. Here, let me just lift it up so you can see. Nope, not in the camera. There we go. No blurry. It's blurry. Yeah, I know it is. You have to put your hand in, in, under it. There we go. Thank you. Yeah, there you so go. This is a little tiny, but it's smooth on the back. So if you did want to use it for a bead cap, you could. But I like it for a little flower. So as you can see, I'm layering the flowers here. <laughs> if you ever go look in the metal beads, which of course they're on that 20% off sale right now, no minimum order. So if you wanted to get some of these little doodads, you could not have to spend very much at all. Um, you'll be amazed what's in there. That's some of my favorite stuff of all. I'm going to put this little round cabochon in here, pearly thing. And of course, it's not quite, there we go. Now it's cooperating. Go have a look in there. If you haven't for a while, you're missing things that are essential, to, in my opinion, to really interesting and good design. Don't miss out on them. I, I swear, there's so much on that site, and it's, it's impossible for me to step it all out all the time, you know, and hit on the right thing. So just take some time and go through those bead sections and see what's in there because you're going to be surprised. Okay, so now I'm going to put these roses here on and I have, I think, I have one here, no, two I have. I have two that are the raw brass, so i am do them first. One's going to go down here sideways, like that. Come on, you get over here. Debbie and Beansy, what am I going to do with you guys? <laughs> what they do? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just listening to their, I mean, they're typing away. <laughs> no, she, that's what she thought. I just, I'm just telling you, you this is how you can find out. Just go to the site, to the video search box. That's not the word talking about. They're just, talking about something else. Yeah. Like, all right, I don't know what they're talking about that. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Have fun. All right, so now that's covering his nose, I don't quite like that. down a little bit that okay so I got a bird over here everybody heard about the bird okay so now I'm gonna put this one's a little bit bigger than the other so I'll put him right here see now I'm getting the nose covered too much so I'm gonna move this out a little bit put it on its side maybe yeah that's better I hate to lift this up now, but yeah, it'll be all right when it's soon up. Yeah, it'll be good. Okay, so I got that done. All right, so now I want to put some rhinestone chain down here. So I'm going to take my toothpick, and I'm going to um, move this along here so that I can just lay the chain down into it without you know dragging it through it. I just found this is a better way. <laughs> Debbie's like, Beansy, you're getting us in trouble. <laughs> I love well. <laughs> so what are you guys making? <laughs> Nothing, they're watching me. Well, just in case they're making something. <laughs> Edie I says, don't care if they are, that's fine. Okay. 
I was wondering. <laughs> Edie says, is the purpose of the buttons to provide... They're shims. Wait, I didn't finish the question. Height and service. You got it, Edie. Yeah. You got it. Plus, I love buttons. So, you know, this one, this guy's... Yes, I love buttons. I love buttons. I might just put this guy someplace else, like here. But I have to be careful. I'm not covering my hole. Did you use a lot of buttons on the other one? Uh, only four. Ah. But you can't even see them all. No, you can't. Because there's stuff on them. Interesting. Hmm. I'm going to put this here. Yeah, it's to put more stuff on Maybe I'll take this off entirely. Sometimes you don't need them. Sometimes you think you need them, you don't. Oh. Okay. Yes, they're like shims. If you go back and you watch my assemblage videos on how you know I used to put all the parts together on the necklace blank you know I use buttons a lot on the bottom layer to to do that give me some high low plus if they show it's no big deal because they're cute yeah they're cute Let's see. okay I'm going to cut this off. I should have probably measured that first. And then I got talking about something else and I didn't put this down right away. So I may have to put a little bit more glue there. Yep. <laughs> Bean Bean says, I need to get some more gilders and perfect pearls. Mine are probably expired. <laughs> I don't know, do the gilders expired? So long as it's, you know, you can get color out of the can, you know, it's, you can use it. Oh, okay, It doesn't it. go bad, it just dries up. Got it. That's the big thing. Good. Dries up. Okay. Debbie said the same. <laughs> and you don't have to buy every color in the world that's out there, because a lot of times you can mix them or do that's other things. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking you, you can mix them. To, you know, That'd people will see cool. something and they'll say, oh, I have to buy all the colors. There's 13 colors. And geez, I'm going to have a ton of money into this. I don't really want to spend my money that way. Guess what? You don't have to. You know, start with a few. And if you like the product and you want to try the other colors, then, you know, when you come to see me, get one or two. You know. And just add to it. This is too long. Ooh, I got right through the... Did you hear that? Crunch? <laughs> what I went through the glass on the rhinestone. Oh. Oh. Okay, that's good. So, you know, you don't have to put that on either. Um, it's just for accent. I don't think I have any two millimeter chain right now. I'm gonna, Soon, I think in about a week, it'll be here. I will have a whole bunch but right now, I don't think I do. I know some people have been waiting for me to do another order on 1928 stuff, too, but I have to wait for a while. And at first, if they're going on vacation, too, as they do, same as the toolers. But um, I'll also have to see how we do in the next month or two. To see if there's enough money to do it. I hate to see it all run down. Can you move the piece up? Yes, I can. They, they were having trouble watching you putting on. Yeah, just say stuff. something. If you can't see it, don't stay there and suffer. <laughs> say something. I have a tendency to pull the piece over toward me because yeah. then I can see better, you know. And I forget. So yeah, tell me. Just say, hey, get that up there. I can't see. Wasting my time. <laughs> it's hard to see when you're trying to do it on top of the camera. <laughs> well, and then not only that, you're trying to show somebody else how to do it too. Yes. You know, and if there's any chance at all that they might want to try it, use things that they bought from me before. Or if they're going to come buy some new ones or whatever. Um, when they do it, I don't want them to waste the parts. So I want to do the best job I can at showing 
how to do it the best way I know. That's not saying there's not a better way. It's just it's how, how I know. That's all. Okay, I think I want to put another um, button right there by him because I'm liking that idea. Okay. Yeah, his poor little face is getting kind of buried. Maybe a little too much stuff on this. You do it like you like it, you know? If you like it all loaded up, then load it. If you don't, then don't. It's, it's up to you. You're, I always tell everybody, well, you're the designer. You know, you think this is the wrong way. What is this? Well, you know, I can tell you what I think about how it looks. But the bottom line is how you think it looks. How you think, you know, if you sell your stuff, will your customers accept it? Do you think they'll understand the piece? That kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, I had to get another thing of E6000. I'll put it there. I may not put this third rose there. I might just put some pearls or something. Or maybe I'll put it over here. Because I don't want to have it all like looking like he's eating it. Right? I don't know if I have enough lip there to glue to. Possibly not. Beansy said you're the queen of assemblage. I don't know about that. Red roses around him for a Kentucky Derby. Yep. It's not a bad so idea. you can make one like that. Why not? It's kind of cute. I never thought about that. <laughs> Somebody said to me one time, oh, you can make a killing. You should make Kentucky Derby hats. You ever seen those? Yeah. They're very serious about them, too. Man. you got to have one. You're going down to that. I think, you know, people could do all kinds of stuff. When I sold my line, I had, I had uh, floral arrangements that I sold wholesale. I had teddy bears that were dressed up like Victorian. I had potpourri that I made. It was like a whole emporium of goods, you know, that you could buy for your store. Um, but in time, it was just, it was too uh, much work to make all that stuff, and some things people didn't buy anyway, so why keep making it, you know? If they're buying it, then fine, but if they're not, then why are you doing this? Okay, I'm just checking to make sure I still got my holes and didn't go over them. So we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, so I think I will take this cab and put it in here. Yeah, I don't know. I was, oh, I was going to put the, the horse's crown up here too. Yeah, maybe the bird should be up higher, huh? Instead of flying into his nose. What do you think? <laughs> maybe the bird should be back up. Back up, bird. Back up. I'll fly up his nose. Okay. Alrighty. So we're getting there. I'm going to show you my last little trick as soon as I set this. And then we'll talk a little bit about the dangles I put on the other one and what kind of chain would work for you and all that. I think I want to pearl on that thing too. Let's see if I got another one. I'm sure I do. Oh yeah. I got lots of those. Those are vintage check. I love check stuff. The Japan order went in. If you ordered them, uh, she says we should have them in a month. I have to make them for us as pearls. And oh, I'm really excited about one thing I'll tell you guys about. Uh, they also make cotton pearls. I don't know if any of you have used cotton pearls, but I love cotton pearls. And cotton pearls are a Japanese product. That's where they're made. I don't care where you see them to buy them, whatever. They're made in Japan. She told me that. The girl. I'm very proud of them. And um, 
So I got some to try them to see, and they also make the cotton pearl cabochons, which look like Miriam Haskell. So they don't make the glass ones anymore, which I wish I could get. I would like those, but the cotton pearls look pretty good, and they can match the color. So the cotton pearls that are coming match the color of the glass pearls I got. So that was kind of cool too, I thought. Okay, so now here's my last little trick I'm gonna show you on this. I wanna put some pearls in, in, you know, these roses here, you see? There's one here, one here, one here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go, you know how we do microbeads? How we just kind of put some glue down in there and just let it catch the beads? Well, I'm gonna do that. Because I have some really, really small pearls I'm going to use. So that'll work good. That's what I used on these. You see, it's almost like caviar. All right. So. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little pinchy poo of these and I'm just going to drift them down in there. And if I lose a few in the process, oh well. I'll pick them up. And don't worry that they're not going in there right. You can fix that later. I'll show you how. I may have to pick this up as much as I... Oh, I don't want to do this. I may have to pick them up and put them in. I hate that. Okay little tiny guys getting them in there and you know the the pickup artist tool that we have you know for picking up stones and stuff it doesn't work great with pearls for some reason it just doesn't I want to pick them up so I find myself still setting it so now I so told you how don't worry if it runs over all you do is just pat them down in there however you want them so you know if I want more pearls, I may add more later to this, but you can see the principle. You just put a little tiny dab of glue in there and then just drift them down there or place them with the tweezers if you want to until it looks right to you. The more I look at this, I think I need to add something there too, but I will decide on that later. I'm not going to worry about it right now because I'm not finishing this piece right now. So let's talk about the one I did finish and then apply it to this and see, you know, what you might want to do next. Okay, so I put on this one, you know, I just look for charms and this and that and like little is better. So I may take this piece here, this one off because this is a little bit too chunky to be in the middle of all this. That's my opinion. It would be better maybe at the bottom hanging. That's me. If you don't think so, then you know, don't worry about it. Whatever looks good to you. And I think this piece is a little too long right here. Um, see, I used a little bit of uh, this old uh, check beaded chain. This one's kind of long too, though. We should have one long like that, maybe in the middle, and then it would balance. I just took some random chain, you know, and I hooked them too. This little charm, the, the um, here's another one. I didn't put it on this one. Uh, Mary said you can see a partial hold, hole in the bottom on the left up near the horse face. Here? Do you plan to cover that up there? Probably. Okay. I'll probably do it like this. Okay. I'll probably do it like, well, in a minute I'll She do was it. wondering if you did that on like on purpose yeah probably because yeah, I don't I you know if you've watched my other videos on this doing this kind of stuff you've heard me say it repeatedly I don't like holes but what I'll do is when I think I'm done with something I'll turn around and move it and look to see where they're at you know I look up underneath I look in the side whatever and so because this is kind of fragile right now I don't want to do that so it does mean yeah sometimes you have to go back and do something or maybe I nah I don't know Maybe put him in there. I don't know. A little charm of rhinestones, maybe. This one had one over here. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing is, Mary, when I do that, 
I want to get it down in because his eye is right there. So I don't want to get it up high and then cover his eye, right? So I will get something I can tuck down in there probably, like a little rose, like this rose that I did on this one. Find another one of those, maybe put down in there, or just some pearls sprinkled down in, like I did on these, and then finish it off. But yeah, a lot of times when I do a piece like this, um, I'll let it set, you know, and then I'll go back and look at everything and check to see if it's the way it ought to be, you know. It's often a process. You think, oh, I did that fast, but you know, I find that I like to let it sit and go back, you know, a day or two and just check. Or maybe I want to remove something, you know. Maybe I want to change something up. So, main thing I'm concerned about right now is that this, I did lift this up a lot, and I'm concerned that this beading wire is going to stay. So I'll have to, um, see after everything's all held up. I can move this on here good enough so I can turn it this way. Probably what I'll do is just put a few pearls in there. But I don't want to get his eye. Poor old horse will have glue in his eye. That wouldn't feel very good. He'll have glue in his eye. Yeah, I think I can do a pinch. Come on, you guys, go down there. Don't get in his eye. Okay. I think I need another one. Okay, what do you think, Mary? I think that did it. What do you think? I think we got it. You know what? It looks like there's a little hole down in there, too. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this set and come back to it, this one. Because, um, like, I don't want anything coming off of it or getting, you know, out of kilter. And when you're working on this, too, um, you want to be sure that your hoop doesn't get out of kilter and, and dry wrong. You know, so, you know, I went ahead and put stuff on this, and I, I took a chance, you know. It looks like it's going to be all right, but it is much better if you don't do that. If you just wait. Do it in steps. But I wanted to get it done for you. So... You guys can see how I did it and what I used, and you can use really so many things with it. We have the supplies to make this stuff if you want to make it. Um, I don't have any kits made. Um, if somebody wants a kit, I'll make them one. Um, as for price, uh, probably be at least $45. Not because this stuff is worth so much, it's just it takes time to pull it together. But usually when I do a kit like that, I give you extra stuff too. So if anybody's interested in a kit, uh, just message me and we will make it happen, okay? But for now, that's probably what it will be. Now, if I get thinking about what's going to be and I think it's less, then okay, then we'll do less. But I don't know. A lot of times um, people will think with kits that, I'm not saying you guys, but I'm just saying sometimes, people will think with a kit that because there's a whole bunch of stuff in there that it should be discounted and that uh, they don't take into account that somebody had to put it together. And it does take time. It takes thought if you want to do it right, you know. Um, so it has to work out for you guys. It has to work out for me too. That's why I took a break from doing the muse boxes. You know that I was doing so many of because it took me three day, <clears throat> three days to get them ready and then they weren't selling that good anyway so I wondered well maybe I need to take a break and step back and see if I knew to need to do these differently you know I did have the checkbook beads box and we may have another one of that of them too because um I have a really great new supplier that I can direct import which I've wanted to do all along so um, I may do boxes with just check beads and a few other things and it'd be easier to prepare but yeah because I wanted I wanted those boxes to be like a whole project in a box for you to have all the jump rings all the head pins you need all the clasp you would need you know every little thing all the chain you would need tons of beads and stuff and then charms and uh, pieces of this and that so that you could just go to town making all kinds of stuff and a lot of people did really do that too and, and enjoyed them but um 
I just needed to step back a little bit. But I'll do them again. I might do them, you know, every few months or something. I don't know exactly. So we'll see. Sweet sentimental piece. I love it. Yeah, I do like it too. As far as me being a master, that's kind of you. <laughs> but okay, Nancy, I'm glad you came. Thanks for sharing with us today. Sorry we were a little late getting on too today, but at least we did make it. I was a little bit worried for a while. <laughs> I thought, oh no, I sent out invites and everything and we're not here. But, you know, it's the internet. Internet stuff happens. Does anybody have a question before yeah. I go? Anybody? Uh, is there something you didn't understand? Like, I was really glad when Mary said, hey, he's got a hole there. You know, come to think of it, there might be a little one there that I could put a few pearls in, too. You know, are you going to do anything with that? It's like, yeah, just hadn't thought about it yet. <laughs> but, yeah, that's what I do. I always turn it, you know, always, and I look down in and everything and say, was well, that okay that way, or do I need to put something else in there or what, you know. So I kind of like this with this patina blue chain. But, yeah, I think I need to fix this up a little bit yet. I almost wish that I'd done wire like this in here, but I don't think I can change that now, so. Well, that thing is pretty, still pretty good. Still pretty good. And yeah, um, when I get them all done, I will sell them. So if anybody's interested, let me know. Um, we're going to start putting some jewelry on my website because at Etsy it just kind of gets lost in the crowd with everything. So um, because I have so many parts there, so we have a separate part on our website now called the Trinket Box. And there is a place for me to put 1928 jewelry in there because I still do have pieces I want to sell. And there's also a place for me to put my jewelry. So we're going to start doing that. How much would you, I charge for a piece like this retail? Well, I know when I made a necklace before, I think it was 90 bucks. I don't know if I would charge that much for these or not. I have to, you know, I have to figure out how much is in it and you know how much pain and suffering and all that but you can see it didn't take me that long to make it you know there's just checking it out and making sure things are good and things like that if you want me to make you one mary or if you want one of these just get with me and i'll make you a deal okay i won't charge you 90 dollars. if anybody here wants them i won't charge you 90 dollars. okay i mean it is a complicated piece and most people that had a piece like this on their website or on their Etsy would ask a bit of money for it, but I don't get that much for my jewelry anymore. Anyways, I, I'm more of a, of a mind that if I've used it to show you how to make it, I would just like to just go ahead and sell it. You know, I'm not going to give it away, but I, I, you know, it'll be realistic. So anyway, so yeah, you know, if you made one and you did it just so and you staged it really good, this is not very good staging on this nasty old thing, you know. You staged it just so and did this and that too, you know, you, you might get way more than I ever did. As some people do. I just, I just don't. So, anyway. So, Dara loves the muse boxes. Well, maybe I'll, I'll bring them back soon. Okay, so anybody have anything else to say before we take off? Because we're late. We're late getting on, late getting off. Time to go make dinner. So, love you all. Thanks so much for coming. I really appreciate it. And I hope you like the project. I hope you'll try it. I hope you'll try it. Do it your way. You don't have to use a horse. You don't have to use a heart. You know, just play around and think, huh, what could I make into a really cool charm enhancer? You know, I'm going to hunt in my... In my and my uh, hard drive because I know I have other things that I've made into charm enhancer jewelry and and uh, like the the one I remember who asked me could you said could you drill holes and put the wire in and hook it you know I have one like that so anyway so we'll look and see what that is okay all right guys thanks so much thanks for coming let's see here hi Bisu oh hi Ann how you doing thank you Brenda and Javi many many thanks thank yeah. you guys. Thank you guys. There's no point in doing it if you don't come, right? Yeah. So, anyway, we had a good time, I think. Hello. Have a great day, and I'm off to make my husband some dinner. Yay. Yay. Bye-bye.